This is a lecture from May 1st, 2020 about microbial interactions and the human microbiome. And the purpose of today's lecture is to define some interactions that microbes have, not just with each other, but with other organisms, and how these um, relationships and interactions can be beneficial um, and or harmful to uh, either the bacteria or the other organisms, as well as to talk a bit about one interaction between microbes and another organism that should be pretty familiar to us, uh, the human microbiome, and talk about how the human microbiome is important um, to us as humans, as well as talk about how it's acquired, maintained, um, and as well as how diverse it is across different parts of the human body. And so we talked a bit about how microbes interact with each other and live together in communities called bio but microbes can also interact with many different other organisms um, through a process known as symbiosis, which is just simply two organisms living together. And we tend to think of the word symbiosis as being beneficial for both of the organisms involved, but that doesn't have to be the case. Um, these are three examples where, in fact, that is true, um, and there is a positive relationship between a microbe and another organism. And the first interaction that microbes can have um, that is positive, both for them as well as the other organism which they're living together with, um, is known as mutualism. And so mutualism is a relationship where both organisms benefit, and it's similar to another interaction known as cooperation, where both organisms benefit as well. Um, but as you can see in this picture over here, mutualism is often obligatory where A and B are both benefiting from living with each other, but A cannot live without B and vice versa. Whereas in cooperation, both organisms benefit from the relationship, but it's not obligatory. And if you removed A, B would still be able to survive, and A would be able to survive without B. They just do better when they're together. And the final sort of positive symbiotic relationship that microbe can have um, is known as commensalism. And that's where one organism benefits. So in this case, that would be B benefits from a symbiotic relationship with A. Um, but A doesn't really give a shit. It doesn't care. It's neither harmed nor um, helped by the relationship. And it was often thought that the human microbiome was sort of the ultimate example of commensalism for a long time, where bacteria benefited from living on us, but we didn't really gain as much from them. And now, um, after studying it for many years, we um, <coughs> believe that the human microbiome is definitely an example of cooperation, um, if not almost mutualism in some cases, where uh, the presence of microbes um, is beneficial to the human and almost an obligatory nature. And so if you're looking for examples of these different relationships, there's a lot that can be found um, specifically in your book. Mutualism, um, probably the most examples, tend to be um, gut bacteria and insects. And so there are some insects, such as P. aphids um, and termites, that have specific gut bacteria that are integral in um, degrading and extracting nutrients from their foods. And without the microbes present in their guts, both P. aphids and termites are not actually able to survive because uh, they're not able to metabolize their own food sources and extract nutrients from them. And so the microbes in their guts get a lot of food and a safe place to live, and the aphids or the termites um, in turn get nutrients derived from those bacteria. And so some symbiotic relationships with microbes can actually be negative. Um, microbes, uh, we don't often think of them as predators or being able to attack and kill their prey, but they are capable of predation um, as well as being preyed upon. And one interesting example of a predator microbe is a vampirococcus. Um, it has a really cute name because it acts similarly to a vampire where it can attach to the outside of a cell and secrete enzymes that basically digest the cellular contents and then it can sort of suck them up. 
Um, microbes can also act in parasitic relationships where they benefit as parasites and the host which they live with or infect is harmed. And so in this case, a parasite will have a positive relationship whereas the host sort of has a negative relationship. Um, and parasitism <laughs> is really hallmarked by the coexistence of these two organisms together where a parasite can't really survive without the host. And so that relationship becomes obligatory for the parasite because it um, gains a lot of benefits by feeding off and infecting whatever host it is existing within. And there are several other um, interactions that microbes can have with organisms as well. One being immensalism where one organism has a negative effect on another. It's not derived from coexistence, and it's usually sort of an indirect or secondary effect. Um, one example being um, B being one gut microbe, and A being another, and A secreting an antibiotic that happens to affect B um, because they're living within the same gut together. And we have talked a bit about competition as a type of symbiosis, and in competition, you just have two different organisms, so it can be two microbes or microbe and another organism that are trying to acquire the same resource, possibly food, a uh, different nutrient, maybe space, maybe sunlight. Um, and so one <coughs> organism, A, can compete with another. And in some cases, one will be able to outcompete the other for a specific resource. And in some cases, competition ends up with both A and B organisms in this case coexisting, but not really being able to thrive in the environment because the resource is limited. And so for bacteria specifically, one um, mechanism that they use to compete with others is antibiotics. And in some cases, so say in this one here, A would be able to secrete an antibiotic that kills B and therefore outcompete it for specific resources. And we saw evidence of competition on the original sort of soil plates where you isolated your candidates from in lab. But there are other types of competition, both in nature um, and even within um, host organisms and within us as well as um, between bacteria that are part of the human microbiome.